But let's now turn to Democratic strategist Steve McMahon and Republican strategist uh, Phil Musser. Um, you want to trash a few uh, Democrats first, or you want me to get uh, Steve to trash a few uh, Republicans? Where do you want to start? Wherever you want to start is great. Joe. It's hard to figure out who's who a lot of times here. Um, okay, let me start with you. You're the Republican, right? I'm the Democrat. Democrats. You're the Democrat? Yeah. You were nodding and, and, and listening I, like well, I knew I was, what was well, going on. I, I think John's Steve's a good brilliant. guy, though. Steve's a good guy. John is brilliant, and uh, his analysis is, is spot on. I mean, this thing is all over but the tears, although you're starting now to see a lot of tears. Um, it's a little late. Uh, it, it proves that the establishment in the Republican Party... I thought was, you were laughing when off-camera when Hillary was talking about the rule of law, and, and I said, well, I'm glad... I was actually laughing at your cynicism. Yeah, I was saying, <laughs> I'm so happy that she's now uh, pushing the rule of law. It's really good to, to see that... Uh, Democrats believe in the rule of law, Joe. <laughs> it's their, the laws that they, uh, uh, that they kind of consider important. Um, okay, uh, Phil, Kasich and Rubio, and take your pick. We have John Kasich on today. What should I ask him? Should I say, hang in there, buddy? Or, or, and people that are giving him money, should, is this helpful? Who's it helpful for? <clears throat> I, think you, <clears throat> I think you've got to ask him just kind of what the viable path forward is. Um, I, I mean, Harwood set it up really, really well. But uh, the results last night were, you know, th there was a little glimmer of hope for Marco Rubio with some of this, you know, some of these late-breaking voters. The messaging of the last week wasn't particularly good for Trump, but nonetheless, Steve's he had a blowout again. win. Steve's you laughing know, he, had, he, he had a blowout win. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think you've got to ask him the, the path. I mean, his, his plan, I think, is to bank it all in Ohio and then basically try Rubio and the have this question? thing winnowed to, to two guys. And I don't, I don't know that that's a plausible, I don't know that's a plausible scenario Phil, at this point in time. Phil, do you remember that movie, Monty Python? where the guy is standing in the That's ravine right. with his arm cut off and his two legs cut off, and he's saying, it's just a flesh wound. It's just a flesh wound. Exactly. I, it sort of seems like that's what's going on with your party right now. Ted Cruz, well, and, <clears throat> Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio are both saying, it's just a flesh wound. We're going on. But, but you, look at, you look at what's happening with Donald Trump, and, and it doesn't look like anyone's going on very much further. And Carson's still yeah, in. He, he, yeah, well, look, Carson needs to go. That's the bottom line. There's no rationale for the Carson campaign, period, right? But on the Democratic side, <clears throat> this thing's still got some gas in it, too. If you noticed Hillary's uh, comments last night, they were aimed at the populist left, not at the center of the election. That's because Bernie Sanders still has got energy, and he's got the ability to tap a button and money. raise three or four <coughs> million bucks yeah. a pop. And as long as he's there, his cash on hand may be higher in April than that of Hillary Clinton. That's a lesson from 2008. I'm sure she hasn't forgotten with Barack Obama. You, you said it, Joe. That's uh, money. Bernie Sanders has money. Well, capitalism. As long as you have money, as long as you have money, and, 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 and people give it to, to be, him to run on a socialist state. It, it used to be that uh, party primaries were a winnowing process, so that people who lost, um, kind of, they lost support, they lost right. money, now and they know. lost momentum. And now, you know, if you have enough people giving twenty-seven dollars on the internet, you can go on forever. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what's going on here. Do you I mean, Joe, that's, Joe yeah. that's what you should actually ask Kasich is, how's his dough? Uh, you know, I think that Carson's been able packed. to raise, raise right. you know, what's Carson's been able to raise money. Rubio's, I think, raising money, a lot of money going into Marco Rubio's, Rubio's super PAC. There's a ton of early vote already banked in Florida. It's the seminal decision point in this race. Over 300,000 Republicans have voted. That's 40-some uh, percent of those didn't vote in 2012. So Florida and Ohio are the pivot points in this race. But in the next two weeks, there are a bunch of states like Kansas and Maine and, frankly, even Puerto Rico, which, you know, may, may sound like not significant, but it's got 23 delegates. Marco Rubio could win there. That matters for the I-4 corridor vote in Florida. They could reset a little bit of the narrative of this race. So there are three guys out of here to watch. Um, it's hard for Kasich to make the case yeah. that he's the fourth, and that's what I'd ask him this morning. It's fun to run for president, uh, I think. Oh, man, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard, but, yeah, you okay. Got people Pat showing up for you. Remember Pat for Paulson you? became yes. a big comedian because? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget the correspondence dinner. Someone showed, uh, Kim Kardashian was in yep. the front table, and there were photographers everywhere. Rick Santorum walked up, and the, the place went wild. It got to go up and meet Kim Kardashian, and mm -hmm. I thought that was fitting that those two were together. But, but it's fun. You're a big star. You what, who was Rick Santorum? He lost the last Senate race, didn't he? Suddenly he gets he's a gold. Again. He's running again, or he was running. Well, yeah, but uh, I think he gets these guys got these guys. At the correspondence it's dinner. for them. It's not for the, the country, and it's not for the party half the time. said it's on your obituary that you are a former presidential candidate. Look, he's yes. a lot of books got a show on Fox. Cutting, right. cutting, cutting the cynicism aside. 
side, though, guys. I mean, you, anyone who anyone who puts themselves through this process, you got to look at it and just say, look, thanks for thanks for service right. to, to country start, because yeah, it really it really well, sucks. It's not easy. It's yeah, really oh, hard. Well, Jeb, and most Jeb of these Bush, guys. Jeb Bush was, was was they talked about how classy and and dignified it was when he saw that it wasn't going to happen. Jeb Bush had three times the number of some of these guys or more, or, or, or he had a lot more money. He had. He had a lot of reason to stay in. He had the class to exit when it was time. And when these guys are hanging on too long. And and look, tr Trump's got the Trump's got super luxury, right? He doesn't have to raise any dough. He's got right. two 757s. He flies back to Mar-a-Lago or, or or New York City to sleep every night. But look, that's a pretty nice formula for a presidential candidate because most presidential candidates I've worked for and that Steve's worked for, it's a lot of Holiday Inns in you know Pella, Iowa, and crappy hotels in uh, the Panhandle of Florida. All bets are off so, this year. This has so been no, totally nothing been, different world. Nothing's we're been in, typical. Man. I just have one Hillary uh, Bernie question, which is assuming that Hillary gets the nomination, does Bernie ultimately step in line, not only endorse her but somehow get this uh, pack of people to really authentically actually vote for her? Uh, or does that think, not happen? Well, no, I think he will. I mean, one of the things that, that you see on our side a little bit more than on the Republican side is it's not quite as vitriolic. I mean, Bernie Sanders is running a campaign on the issues that Bernie Sanders cares about, but he's not really attacking yeah, Hillary much. Steve, they'll all go to, to, to Hillary, but the, the uh, excitement gap is the other, well, the other side. And has, there has been about a 25 percent decline yeah, in the Democratic turnout. They might not go out. They, they may move to her, but they may not go and vote assume on voting. The, the, most, the most excitement gap filling thing in this race might not be Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. It might be Donald Trump. So oh, well, if, you think about, right. if you think about who the voters are that Hillary needs to turn out, she needs to turn out you know, African-American and Hispanic oh. voters and young voters. It might be and Donald those Trump or, or Scalia might be the most exciting I think thing the, uh, But I think the guys... Scalia the, the, is the, 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 yeah, for Democrats. That's what the, I mean. The, the intensity gap... Listen to other people once in a while. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, you're, you're talking... <laughs> did you hear what we just said? I did, yeah. No, uh, I was just... I was going to give you two, two, okay. two cents on, uh, on, on just what I think that, you know, Sanders kind of gets out of this, which is yep. at the end of the day, I think uh. he's going he's gonna to ask for something at the convention, and he's going to ask for a couple things in the platform that will probably pull the party, the party leftward, but... Steve's point that uh, uh, I think you're going to have a fully engaged, fully mobilized, highly motivated general election, you know, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, is a fact of life. So I suspect that the people that are out motivated for uh, Sanders will ultimately transfer to Clinton at the end of the day. You're, you're going to have you're going to have Republicans who are going to be walking well, away from Donald right, Trump and voting for Hillary right. Clinton. So I mean, there's going to be enthusiasm. There's, there's still an, uh, there's an anybody but Clinton side and there's an anybody yeah. but Trump side. So we'll see how it works itself out. I'm, I, I don't know yet. Thanks, uh, Steve uh, and Phil. Thank you. I know it's hard on on a remote. Uh, you know, you're, sorry about that. He's Steve. No, that's okay. St no, I mean it's it's hard for you to get in and it's it's your right to. And uh, we all interrupt each other. Believe me, that's all I hear about. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah.